standing for prayer. You know how long I've been waiting to look out and see all you and say, grace and peace. <laughs> grace and peace. Oh. I missed all you very much. And I, when Pastor Tim walked out, I, don't, I didn't know that song by heart. And I usually use him as a key to how the song goes. And so when he leaves, I just, mm-hmm, ah, ah. Before we go into prayer, I'd like to read a passage from God's word, Philippians 4. 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, Whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne in thanks, in gratitude. Personally, Lord, it is a blessing to me to know that right now I'm focusing on my King, my Savior, my Lord, but I know when I open my eyes, I will see the people that I love, the people that you love. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that we're here today. And in a world where we can get so quickly caught up in the fear, in the anger and hate and the pain, let us focus on you. Let our hope reside in the one that can control it, be sovereign over it. And the only place that these things can ever make sense, and that is in your hand. Your hand is mighty and strong to save. We know that these things will not last forever on this earth, but your joy, peace, love, grace, and mercy, and strength, and care will endure forever. May us rest in that. May, us, may we meditate on the things that are true, that are pure, that are lovely. As we gather here in fellowship and worship, may we glorify you in all that we do and say and act and feel and think for your glory. In Jesus Christ's name alone, amen. amen. Let your sit in a row of your own family members turn and greet each other. As you stay at your seats and um, sing with us Blessed Assurance. Submission, all is 
as we sing Power in the Blood. After a quick <laughs> scripture reading. <laughs> ah, business as usual. Uh, here we go. Uh, I've been asked by Pastor Tim to read from Ephesians four, uh, 3, 3, 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now you may stand to sing there is power in the blood.
uh, such a joy again to be able to be together and to be inside and I appreciate those who are over in our uh, overflow seating. Um, I know that it's not quite the same experience probably as in here. Um, maybe next week I'll come down there and sing with you and, and lead you astray from the, the song leaders. But um, we uh, are here gathering inside. That's our plan to continue to move forward uh, with the Sunday morning services at 10 o'clock, gathering together and fitting in as many people as, as possible and as safe a way as possible. I'm just going to remind you again for our exiting time uh, that uh, some people are more comfortable than others. I don't see a lot of masks uh, here, but uh, uh, some people are, feel better being around people than other people do. Um, if you stop and linger and gather on your way out, this is fish like when you stop and linger and gather <laughs> on your way out, if you will space yourselves out and not jam up doorways, not jam up the lobby uh, way, find a, find a space if you've got friends that you're comfortable being around. Some of you I know have been gathering together despite whatever rules were in place the whole time. Uh, we're not going to talk about that here. That's not what we're talking about. Um, but I do want you to uh, keep in mind uh, going forward trying to make people as comfortable as possible and have as positive an experience uh, out of this as we can as we continue to work together and hopefully going toward a more normal situation uh, than this. Uh, the bulletin says the offering is now. We're not passing plates. So we're not passing out bulletins. Be sure you pick up a bulletin on the way out. Uh, if you're part of the regular fellowship of Fish Lake Bible Church, um, we have directories available. We have a new directory with as up-to-date information as possible. Um, we've... Uh, we realize people change their cell phone numbers and stuff uh, about as quickly as we print directories, but uh, uh, if you are a regular attender here, uh, check the table in the foyer on the way out to pick up a directory. Uh, we'll make some extras of those available uh, in the coming weeks, but we want to be sure uh, we try to get out as many as possible. Um, be polite around the table, no no tackling, they're, they're there, okay? Um, uh, if you're in it, you, there's a name on yours, and grab that one and take it with you. Um, the other thing I want to do at this time in place of the offering is comment on uh, just where we are as a country and have us have a time of prayer uh, as Sarah plays for us what would normally be an offertory. Um, on the way out, you can leave your offerings as you have been at the driving services. If you're not part of the electronic giving, just drop it in the jars that are out there. Um, uh, if you're visiting with us, we didn't ask you to come here to give money, so don't worry about it. But um, Right now in our, in our country, besides the devastation of the uh, shutdowns and the, the virus and the uh, struggles that people were going through, uh, we've had added to that the tragedies of the, the ridiculous senseless loss of life and uh, now a ridiculous violent response. Um, it's just not the way we want to see America. Um, but. As someone's commented this morning, we really are not surprised when sinners act sinfully. It is consistent with what we believe as Christians from the scripture, that God is good and people are sinners. Um, God has been the one to come into our world uh, since he created it and provide a remedy for sin, provide uh, forgiveness and grace, uh, teach us to lead the people around us to him and to the cross find the grace to handle the pressures of life. Um, if you know Jesus Christ as Savior in the midst of facing death, which uh, has been a topic for months now, we have hope. In the midst of facing sin, we have grace. Um, we have frustration, anger, all those things. But Christians know that we forgive because Christ has forgiven us, not because people deserve it. Um, forgiveness is that equal approval. Um, when something is wrong, it is not unless someone has a reason to do wrong. We need to be reminded of that in our own lives. We need to be reminded of that as we deal with other people. We need to be reminded of that as we comment on other people's behavior. Police did wrong. Doesn't matter why. The rioters are wrong. Riots are different than protests. We have a lot.
lot of people who are overly stressed right now in, in the world in which we live, uh, we are people who can do something about that. When we face trials, the Bible says Christians come to him and we make our requests known. And so, uh, not asking you to place anything in the offering plate during this song, but asking you to bow your heads and pray and ask God to work in your heart as we gather together today to work in the hearts of of those we come in contact with this week, that we might demonstrate for them the love of Christ. We're all frustrated and, and angry about something, it seems, but um, let's let's not bring that message to the world. There's enough of that message all around us. Um, we need to bring Christ with us when we go. We need to do that in prayer. And we need to pray for those who are in leadership. As the Bible commands us to, and uh, certainly we can see that it's needed. So let's spend this time in prayer. Sarah, if you could.
and seated as we sing Jesus paid it all. Savior say thy strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray hide in me thy all in all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe by Lydia Cook.
you, Lydia. Take your chapter 8. If it's possible that you have not been following along on our YouTube channel with uh, chapter 7, you're going to have to just kind of jump in and trust me on chapter 8 um, because it starts with the word therefore and it's based on what Paul taught in Romans chapter 7. So you'll, you'll kind of just have to go, hmm, what? Um, say, well, I've been here for the drive-in services. I didn't, didn't, I'm not even like that. I didn't do two same services and expect you to watch them. So um, that was, uh, if you're, if you want to catch up on chapter 7 and you, and you didn't follow along uh, while we've not been meeting inside, then um, you can get caught up on that. But uh, we're going to start in chapter 8 with the verse, first couple of verses and uh, talk about uh, being free. I thought that was a good... <laughs> you don't get it. All right. Um, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just really thankful for the opportunity and the privilege to follow Christ. And uh, it's not a not a uh, hard thing and and I think sometimes when we talk about Christianity being hard it's that struggle we were talking about from Romans chapter 7 in that I struggle in the flesh to get it right and therefore I uh, I feel like I'm failing and uh, feelings are not what we base our Christian faith on we believe God and I'm so excited today to have till noon to teach Um, no, I, I won't do that to you either. Wouldn't wouldn't preach the same sermon twice on the same day, and and wouldn't wouldn't keep, try to talk for an hour and a half. So, uh, we're just going to look at the first two verses, and we're going to, I hope, really take away from that uh, the confidence that we have in Christ that allows us to live a life of freedom, not because we're Americans, where we thought we were free, um, and we hopefully will continue to be uh, that. The reason we understand any concept of freedom from tyranny in America is because we were founded on Christian principles. The idea was people given the opportunity and influence of truth will do the right things. Um, that requires the influence of truth, and we've worked against that, and um, we have people who are opposed to that, and that has certainly not been the predominant thought process in our country for a while. And it's starting to show. Uh, we're getting some pretty ragged, ugly edges to, to demonstrate as a society. But the church is not everyone. And the church is not American. Um, I've been able to be a lot of places in the world on mission trips and uh, traveling. Um, I, one of my responses to being locked down has been to go on YouTube and do a search for travel. And on TV, I've been to tropical islands, I've been to Japan, I've been through Europe, I've been to Scandinavia again. I was there when I was younger, and we were going uh, going through that the other night. Mary Beth uh, sat down by me and was like, and I've been there, and I've been there, and I've been there, and I've been there. that's really cool. And uh, a guy with a machine gun pointed at me, at me here. Um, yeah, don't ask, it was kind of a mistake. Um, we... I, I like it here, you know. but I, I'm just really passing through. I have a better place I'm going than I've even been, and I've been some fantastic places, but uh, I want you to follow along as I read here in the first two verses. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the opportunity, the privilege we have to come into your presence, to look into your word, to gather together and, and rejoice in what Christ has done for us. Father, may we today glorify Christ as he's lifted up. May our focus be on the finished work of Calvary. May our hope be in the life that comes by the Spirit of God. And Father, may all the praise and glory go to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have allergies, apparently. Um, that's another thing I've learned lately. Um, I'm usually moving too fast to notice. But um, uh, 
we woke up yesterday and the lake in front of our house was covered with this scum. I went out and checked what that was because I don't use the tree pollen. I mean, it's just like an inch deep on the water. And I was like, well, that explains a lot of things. Um, that's not good. Uh, God's work in us has made us free. No longer are we bound to sin in condemnation of the law. We are alive and we're free in Christ. No condemnation. This first verse starts with that idea, and you'll notice in some of your Bibles it'll have italics and some of them won't have it in the translations uh, there at all, but it says, therefore. And so again, that's based on chapter 7. Chapter 7, Paul talked about the fact that there was this struggle within the believer between the flesh and the Spirit of God, between the law, which proved we were guilty. Paul said, even as, even as Paul... He struggled with failure. He struggled with sin. He did things he didn't want to do. And he failed to do good things that, he, that his heart wanted to do for God. And at the end of chapter 7, just to look at what it's there for, verse 24, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. He said, because Christ has set me free, therefore, now, there's no condemnation. Now. Did a comparison of a whole bunch of different uh, versions of this translation, and now is skipping, missed you know, a bunch of, now is really important. Where do you stand with God right now? And this now is going to be in your Bible tomorrow. This now means now. In the plan of God, in the truth of God, in the call of God in the Christian's life, we now have no condemnation. We're not okay today because we came to church. Tomorrow's Monday. Nobody's okay on Monday. Just, just Monday's just, you know, we should go right to Tuesday. No, even on Mondays, for the believer, there is no condemnation. What about last week? You had a really bad day last week? Miserable failure. I mean, you blew it everywhere. You blew it at work if you get to go. You blew it at home. You, you blew it in the parking lot of a grocery store because you forgot your mask. Right there, in Christ, for a believer, there's no condemnation. I hope you're going to have a great week. I hope that you'll go out from here encouraged and focused on Jesus Christ and with a goal of glorifying Him in everything that you do. But if you bomb... There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You don't go on a naughty list. That's Santa Claus, not Christ. He doesn't deal with you differently because he only deals with sinners. Because all of sin comes short of the glory of God. Even as Christians, that was Paul's whole struggle in chapter 7. Hey, I don't get it right. I'm telling you, if Paul doesn't get it right, you're not doing that great. He's, he's pretty impressive, Paul. But he says, I struggle. Man, I, I do things I do not want to do. I know a lot of Christians who would do more for God if they could just be, okay? See yourself in Christ. Accepted in the Beloved. There's no condemnation in Christ. Condemnation is a legal term saying that you're guilty. But he said, we're in Christ. He took our punishment. We are guilty, but our guilt has been paid for. The penalty of sin is death. And Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. The penalty has been paid. God is not an unjust God that he 
stamps paid on the bill and goes, except if you, you know, I'll be back. Christ said, it is finished. In Christ, there is no condemnation. So the question today is, if you are in Christ, it's a relationship, it's not a religion. It is your salvation called by God where the Holy Spirit of God worked in your heart to understand that Christ died for you according to the Scriptures, that He was buried and that He rose again according to the Scriptures. And you said, that's my only hope. It's not Christ plus my baptism, plus my family, plus my church, plus being American, plus being anything, plus being perfect for the rest of my life, plus being baptized. I am for many of those things. They just don't make you more saved. They don't, just don't keep you saved. They do not remove your condemnation. Only Christ can do that. And according to this passage, according to what Paul has said, for those who are in Christ Jesus, let me just highlight a couple of things that it means to be in Christ Jesus. One, if you are in Christ Jesus, you are saved. He came to seek and to save those who are lost. And he said, I'm coming for my people. If you are in Christ, you are part of the body of Christ. You are in the church. I had Timothy read from Ephesians because I think being part of the church is one of the concepts that we miss. And uh, when we haven't been able to be together, we begin to forget God has a plan for these people that he's called. Salvation is between you and God and a whole bunch of other people that he's called. If he came for only one sinner and you're that person, he would have come. But there were plenty of us. And he came to say, seeking to save those who were lost. And he has brought us in Christ, into the body of Christ, where he's the head. We're the parts of the body, according to Corinthians chapter 12. But for us, there is no judgment that can be passed upon us at any time that we're condemned. That the wage of our sin needs to be paid over. How should we respond to that? The last part of the verse says, we do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now, some translations only have the first phrase there. We do not walk according to the flesh. Some have, we do not walk according to the flesh and according to the Spirit. Some don't have any of that. Your translation might not have that whole last part of the verse. Different manuscripts have different things. It doesn't make me feel good when I have to say that. I want to lob that out there. The statements are true. They're found, the first part, we don't walk after the flesh, chapter 6, chapter 7. If it's not here, it's, it's here. The last part, we walked in the Spirit. It's in verse 10, if it's not in this verse. I'm not an ancient manuscript guy. Uh, I believe all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. I'm perfectly happy with the translation I have uh, and the fact that God's preserved the Word of God to bring it to me today. But in any translation you're holding, there's no condemnation. If you've got that last phrase, the response to not being condemned isn't, then I've got a free pass. I'll do whatever I want. No, 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 no. We don't walk according to the flesh, and we do walk according to the Spirit. That's the right way to see being free. Some people seem be believe that if we teach that you don't lose your salvation, that you can't blow it again, that, there's a, that people will just go out and do it. No one has ever believed it's okay to sin as a Christian if they have a Bible. That's not what the Bible teaches. The fact that I'm not condemned for my sin doesn't mean I want to do it. I don't want to, there's plenty of condemnation. If you do something wrong, there's plenty of people who will condemn you. God won't. But there, you get to feel terrible. You know, there's all kinds of false guilt in the world. 
as Timothy and I were discussing, we love when people go on line and say, if you don't do this, you're not really a Christian. If it's not in the Bible, you don't get to make up what makes people Christian. I had a pastor friend last week that I said, maybe you should find your own business. Um, he, he implied that if anyone was going to open their church, they were not right with God and they were just rebellious. I said, I love you, but you, you can't find a verse for that anymore. Maybe you shouldn't make blanket statements about what everybody else has to do according to you because we already have a really big book we're supposed to follow. Um, but I blow enough stuff that's in the book, I feel terrible all the time. Unless I think biblically and I say, thank God Christ died for me and there's, there's no condemnation. There's no guilty at the end of my page covered in the blood of Christ. Forgiven and removed as far as the east is from the west. And the law of the Spirit. Now the word for law here in the Greek is just that. It's a, it's a principle of requirement and that law is working in us, the Bible says. It's the law of the spirit of life. It's not written down like the Old Testament law, but it is just as true. It is a statement that if you are in Christ, you've been placed there by the Spirit of God, you have been sealed by the Spirit of God. You are led by the Spirit of God. You are given enlightenment by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God works in you to produce the life of Christ. And that law working in us is a spirit of life. What did Paul say at the end of chapter 7? I thank God that it's Jesus Christ who is freeing me from my obligation under the law that only shows me what a sinner I am. There's nothing wrong with the law. It's not a law of sin. We'll look at that next. But uh, this law is the principle and the truth stated in Scripture over and over again that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is life. So much so that later in the chapter it says, if you don't have the Spirit, you're not His. But that life is found in Christ Jesus. What do you say? There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Here the law of Spirit is the law of life in Christ. Jesus Christ is the most important issue of your life, of my life, of the world we live in. What is missing right now, what is causing the pain and the suffering in the world in which we live is an absence of a knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you're struggling and you thought your life consisted in the abundance of the things that you possess and the things that you possess are getting whacked by the current realities of the world around you. Maybe it was just being an American, having the right to do what you want and go where you want and associate with who you want and all the things we thought were our rights in life. And they're all getting pulled and stretched and crushed and and we're and we're uncomfortable with that and we're saying what even as an uncomfortable unhappy unsettled fairly stressed you know there's something way more important than that for me personally jesus christ I am seated in him at the right hand of my Father in heaven. I am looking not for the government to deliver me from my current ills. I'm looking for Jesus Christ to deliver me from this body. I mentioned before, in a worst case scenario of any crisis, 
you die. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, he's got that covered. You won't be here any longer than he wants you to be, and you won't ever end if you're a believer. I don't have good news for those who are unbelievers. Eternal condemnation is not great. But eternal life in Christ? That's the law of the Spirit of God. What is the law of sin? Here in verse 2 it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin. My favorite part of the verse is that I've been made free. Free from the law. Oh, happy content. Um, I thought sure somebody would start singing. But anyway, that's a thing for us, man. We are free from the law. That doesn't mean we shouldn't study Leviticus. I listened to a really great sermon this last weekend, how, how wonderful it is for Christians to study Leviticus. He did a good job of selling that, because it's hard to convince people they should read Leviticus. It is, uh, it, it is that's some work, okay? Um, but all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know what you find in Leviticus? The plan of a holy God to demonstrate to people that the way they are without him is not okay. And that his whole goal is not to have them understand how horrible they are. All that meat cutting and piling and burning, they should have gone, oh, something's wrong here. This is a lot of sacrifices. Wish my neighbors would straighten up. No, that's... That is not the problem. That is the way we approach the world right now. There's all this sin in the world. I wish those, I wish those people would get their act together. Wish that lady, we don't know who I'm talking about. Um, that's not my problem. My problem is me. My problem is my sin. My problem is how I respond. There isn't a problem with other people. There's a problem with all people. And the good news is, there's a law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus that sets you free from the law of sin. You do not have to keep sinning. I grow extremely weary when Christians tell me, oh, I just can't help it. Yes, you can. You've been set free. You don't have to follow the flesh. That's the wrong response to the grace of God. The law of sin is the Old Testament which points out to us that we are sinners. We fall short of the glory of God. He says it ought to be like this. We go, yeah, that's not the way it is. Christ fulfilled the law and was the perfect sacrifice Hebrews says he was a better sacrifice than all the Old Testament sacrifices. And in him, that law of sin wasn't condemned. There's nothing wrong with the law. It was fulfilled. And because it's fulfilled, I don't have to fill it again. Something being filled means it's full. Okay? Um, I can't add to it. Jesus did a really good job. Because it's full, he says to me, here's a new law, the spirit of life. I'm going to work in you. And I'm not going to work in you to show you what a loser you are. I'm going to give you success in the spirit as you walk in Christ. No condemnation. And because of that, I've been freed from death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Christ paid for that. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and you've received him as your Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life as the gift of God. And again, the concept that eternal life is something that you lose works against the concept of life and eternal. Eternal life. And you shall never perish I 
I think that's a good deal. I'm pretty excited about that. We've had to deal with the fact that it, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. We have been reading every day about how many people have died. I want to clarify for everyone who's here in case anyone missed it or anyone's going to watch the sermon on YouTube later. People have always died before the virus came. Just about as many people have always died as have died during this time. They did not die of this virus. Whoever they are and however they die, they will stand before God, the Bible says, and give an account. And the only thing that they can account for that will stand them for eternity is, I'm in Christ. My hope is in the Lord. And because of that, I don't fear death. Doesn't mean I do crazy stuff. It means no matter what I do, I don't fear death. Because I've been made free. Right now we complain about our freedoms being denied. I hear a lot of that. Usually when I'm talking. Um, I'm, 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 not, I'm not a good relaxer. Not a good stayer. I, I wouldn't define anyone's else's behavior by, by my definition of stay at home. But I'll tell you what, even if I lose all of my freedom here, I'm free in Christ. And I have a reason to rejoice. We have brothers and sisters in really oppressive places. In Russia, you have to have permission to walk outside your home. They have an app on their phone. Sound familiar again? They have an app that traces their movement that has to be loaded on their phones so that if they walk out to the road, so you can't be on the sidewalk if a policeman stops you. If you walk to the store, if you get in your car, they can pull you over just to check whether you're on the route. I don't know if they use Google Maps for this or not. But uh, if you're not on the route that the app says you're supposed to be on, you're arrested. We have Christian brothers and sisters living with that kind of oppression. You know, want to know what's, what's really great still? They're free in Christ. They're not free in movement. They're not free here. But they're really looking for a better land, a better place, a better home, a better life. And here, they still have the most important thing. And we have the most important thing where you have Christ. So we need to share the news of our freedom in a dark and enslaved world. It may get darker. It may get worse. Um, if you're a negative person, you're the, you're the person wondering, oh, you know, don't worry, it'll get worse. Oh, yeah. um, if you're a positive person, like, oh, this isn't so bad. It'll all work out. Our lives are not based on our personalities. They are based on truth. Whatever your personality is, let God adjust that baby. Take the truth. Let the Spirit of God take the Word of God and wash your heart. What it takes to be saved is what it takes to walk in the Spirit. It's what it takes to have hope in the day in which we live. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your word. We pray that you would help us to rejoice in the fact that in Christ we've been made free from the law of sin and from the consequence of death. We've been 
given a new law, the work of the Spirit of God, as it takes the Word of God and washes our hearts, washes our thinking, corrects the things that are wrong with us, deals with the same sins that the Old Testament law dealt with, but deals with them in a way of saying this is something that is overcome in the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The power of the Spirit of God to transform a life, to make someone new creation. Father, that's what we rejoice in today. Father, I pray for my country. I pray for those who are in leadership. I pray that we would begin to uh, return to normal. Uh, there isn't really a new normal because if things are new, they're not normal. Um, things are different now. But the truth is the truth. And right now, in the circumstance we're in, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Father, if there's someone here without Christ as Savior, I pray that the Spirit of God would take the Word of God and work in their hearts to draw them, call them to you. They might receive Christ and to know his life eternal. We'll give you the praise and the glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. It's great to have you here today. It's great to be finishing together in uh, worship. Uh, we're going to ask you to stand, but I'm going to encourage you, if you're here and, and you're visiting with us, that in the bulletin there's a little... Uh, tear out flap thing that has some visitor information on it and we'd like to have a record of your being with us if you're uh, there's some boxes on there if you need anything it's a way to communicate with uh, us that we can uh, get back with you uh, if you even if you're one of our regulars that may be easier than finding and working through and social distancing uh, I don't want to have a, a long line of people standing six feet apart waiting to chat with me that would be weird um, but uh, if you if you need anything uh, again, we emphasize this in our in our context from your deacons and, and the videos and things. But uh, we're here to serve you, and we want you to uh, be blessed. And so your pastors and deacons are, are available to you. Uh, let us know what's needed, and uh, we'll do the best we can uh, to uh, help. But uh, if you're here without Jesus Christ as Savior, the only one who can help is Jesus Christ. And we'd love to take the scriptures and open them and show you how you can know him. Whom to know is life eternal and freedom in Christ. Let's stand together and vote. Join us in singing I'll Fly Away.
laughing. No, no. All right. You've been so good at, at driving church by taking time and being polite and not running people over. Um, uh, do the same thing in here, okay? Just uh, take your time, go home. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you.